Hey everyone and welcome to my channel, The Reader Teacher. My name's Scott. In these coming soon videos, I'll be sharing my most anticipated children's books releases for each month. And this video is Series 2, Episode 5 of Coming Soon, and it previews the upcoming books for the month of May 2022. You can find my previous month's Coming Soon videos here. I'll be going through them in release date order, and where they have the same release date, then they'll be alphabetically by title. If you just want to hear about a specific book, then make sure to use the timestamps in the description below. I hope this video helps you to discover more children's books to add to your TBRs, and I'll be doing more monthly videos like this one throughout the year, so make sure to leave me a like, hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Let me know in the comments below which of the books you like the look of, and all the links to the books that I mention in this video will also be in the description box below. So let's take a look at the books. First up is The Boy Who Grew a Tree by one of my favourite authors, Polly Hoyang, and illustrated by So Jung Kim McCarthy, out on the 5th of May. In this shorter novel, perfect for younger readers, we follow Timmy, who learns that his local library is due to be demolished. When he and his new friends break in to explore, he finds a tiny green seedling springing up between the dusty floorboards. With his love, care and watering, the little shoot magically grows very quickly into a huge tree. As the library becomes this little boy's refuge and the tree grows bigger due to other children taking care of it, the day of its demolition grows closer. But can Timmy find help from everyone else in the community before it's too late to save the library and his tree too? Big thanks Knights of for sending me a finished copy. I really like the references to other Knights of releases on the cover such as A Kind of Spark, Happy Here and High Rise Mystery. Also out on the 5th of May and from another of my favourite authors, Ross Mackenzie, comes The Colour of Hope. Years ago, the Emperor used dark magic to steal all the colour from the world. Now he keeps it for himself, enjoying its life-giving power while everyone else must exist in cold shades of grey. That is, until a miracle baby is born. But her life is threatened from her very first breath, when the Emperor's murderous ripper dogs and black coats soon come hunting her way. As she's saved by a drifter mage, who becomes her adopted father, Rumour of this rainbow child spreads across the Dominion, giving hope to those who have lost it, but bringing danger and adventure to Sandy and Hope with every step they take. Thanks Anderson Press for the gorgeous finished copy. Now, if you love Brightstorm or have been part of the original Aurora crew like me, then you'll be absolutely delighted to see Fire Song by Vashti Hardy, the third and final instalment of the Brightstorm trilogy coming out on the 5th of May. This time, Arthur and Mordy get to decide the Skyship's destination, and they choose the Volcanic North, where years before their parents found the rare moth that became their family emblem. But their scheming, ambitious aunt, Eudora Vane, is still dedicated to trying to destroy the Brightstorm family name, and nothing is going to get in her way. The further north the Aurora travels, the more family secrets are revealed. But how will this adventure end? I can't wait to find out. Huge thanks, Scholastic, for the golden finished copy. How to Teach Grown-Ups About Pluto by Astronomer and NASA Solar System Ambassador Dean Regas and Aaron Bletcher out on the 5th of May teaches its readers why Pluto was kicked out of the Planet Club. Told in a funny and accessible way through its witty words and illustrations and plenty of jokes, you'll learn all about its demotion to a dwarf planet, as well as find special features such as timelines, fast facts and planetary personality quizzes to keep your scientific thinking on the solar system going. Thanks Britannica Books for the finished copy. In The Hunt for David Berman by Claire Mulligan, out on the 5th of May, it is 1940, and young Robert is a wartime evacuee, sent to live with his grandparents on their Scottish farm, whilst his father is away fighting and his mother is continuing the war effort in London. When he's out exploring the coastline one day, he discovers David, a kinder transport child who's left his mother and grandmother behind in Berlin, and David is now hiding from his cruel foster family. Vowing to keep David a secret from his family, he tries to help him, but with not only the effects of war and fractured families on both boys' minds, it is soon discovered that an Enigma codebook has been hidden in David's suitcase and a Nazi secret agent is on his way to find David to retrieve the codebook and kill him. Can the boys save each other as well as themselves? Thanks the Moth for the finished copy. Another one for the 5th of May is The Insiders by Kath Howe. In this multi-perspective story we meet Callie, Ted, Nico and Zara, who are a close bunch of best friends. 
but more than that, they're like family to each other. Outside school, they see each other a lot, and at school, they're in the same class. But they're also in the same class as Billy. And when Billy ends up playing a practical joke on Ted, and Ted stops talking to the rest of the gang, they know that something is up. But Billy too has his own problems, and between Billy and Ted, the children's friendship is tested to the limit. We learn a lot in this story about each character as they narrate their own chapters, and this story really does show how much talking can help. Thanks Nosy Crow for the finished copy. In Major and Minor by Karen Owen and Louise Forshaw, out on the 5th of May, things are being stolen all over town, but nine-year-old Callie Major has other things to worry about, her dreaded new hearing aids, which she calls the slugs. But when she meets Bo, an abandoned minor bird, she discovers something amazing. Thanks to her new hearing aids, she can hear him. Can she use her slugs to help catch the thief and save the day? Thanks Firefly Press for the proof copy. Set in a world where plants talk, friendship is hard won, and adventure is around the bend of every river, The Map of Leaves by Yarrow Townsend, out on the 5th of May, sounds like a superb read. Since Ma's death, Orla has been left to live alone like she wants to, with just her beloved garden for company. But when sickness comes to a plant-tangled village and nature is blamed for it, can Orla use all that she knows to find a cure? Armed with her mother's book of plants and remedies, she finds herself making friends aboard a riverboat with two other stowaways as they must navigate the rapids of the river to a place from which they may never return from. Thanks Chicken House for sending me a finished copy. A Perfect Spot by Isabel Simler out on the 5th of May is a stunning picture book that follows a ladybird who is looking for a safe place to lay her eggs. But nature is full of surprises and every time she sets down she finds the land is already taken by other creepy crawlies. With nowhere to go, will she find that perfect place to lay her eggs? Starting with a double page spread about the life cycle and metamorphosis of a ladybird and finishing with more of them that provide information on every creature encountered in the book, with the most glorious illustrations all the way throughout, this should absolutely be in every school and every home. Huge thanks Pushkin Press for the beautiful finished copy. Princess Minna, The Enchanted Forest by Kirsty Applebaum and Saha Hagu, out on the 5th of May, is the start of a short story series that is perfect for younger readers who are now reading early chapter books. Full of colourful illustrations, join her on lots of funny exciting adventures as she sorts out mix-ups and mishaps in the kingdom. In the Enchanted Forest, Princess Minna has to wake a sleeping prince before nightfall, but along the way she finds a swan, an old lady and a very fluffy sheep, all of them in a fix. Can she help them and still reach the prince before sundown? Thanks Nosy Crow for the finished copy. The Secret Wild by Alex Evelyn out on the 5th of May tells the story of Fern who has spent her whole life in the rainforest and loves nothing more than exploring and talking to the trees. When she suddenly has to leave it all behind to move to London she feels like she's been uprooted from what she knows best. Thankfully she meets a little plant that can understand her every word and with its help can she solve the growing mystery of the strange things that start appearing in the city such as giant lily pads on the Thames and monkey vines on the London Eye. Thanks Walker Books for the finished copy of this botanical book. Written by ex-Olympic fencer Eloise Smith, Sister to a Star publishing on the 5th of May is an action-packed adventure of twin rivalry between two sisters who are forever crossing swords with each other. Evie loves practicing fencing in an after-school club, whilst Tallulah prefers to be the star of the show, acting in auditions. But what they couldn't predict was how their worlds would collide with such different passions. But when Tallulah goes to Hollywood, Evie goes too, as her sister's identical stand-in. And soon their roles are reversed when the film needs some swordplay and it's Evie who's the one that's enjoying the limelight. That is, until Tallulah goes missing. Big thanks Chicken House for sending me a finished copy. Out on the 5th of May is Through the Forest by Yi Zheng Li in which a young boy lost and alone enters the forest, not knowing the path that lies before him. Here he meets a figure called Emptiness, who guides him on his way. Together they find keepsakes deep in the forest that trigger memories, both good and bad. As he moves closer to the sun-filled meadow on the other side of the forest, the boy learns that to be truly happy, he must embrace his past. And big thanks Lantana for the beautiful finished copy. Two friends awaken a world of myth and magic in The Unmorrow Curse by Jasmine Richards out on the 5th of May. 
It's not every day that you find a famous weather woman banged by magic to a tree deep in the woods. But that's just what happens to new friends Buzz and Mari, and it's only the start of their adventure. Now, as humanity is forced into a lockdown called the Unmorrow Curse and is forced to repeat the same Saturday over and over again, Buzz and Mari must journey to collect the runes of Valhalla and awaken the other day guardians before vengeful god Loki can get to them first. Big thanks, you clown, for the finished copy. The Animal Lighthouse by Anthony Burt and Kira Flood, out on the 12th of May, introduces us to Jim, who has been brought up by a wonderful group of animals on a hidden island deep in the Caribbean, and as such he knows no other life or who his real parents are. Washed up on the island as a baby in a barrel of rum and treasure, he has helped run its special lighthouse with the animals ever since. But now, trouble is brewing. Someone, or something, has stolen the lighthouse bulb filaments. If Jim, Oscar and the rest of the animals can't get the lighthouse beams working again, the hidden island will no longer be a secret. And with a pirate ship on the horizon, can they solve it and stop it before danger smashes their island apart? Thanks Guppy Books for the finished copy. To mark the 10th anniversary of the best-selling Barry Loser series, the first title in a new series of graphic novel adventures, Barry Loser Total Winner by Jim Smith, will be published on the 12th of May for the first time in full colour. Featuring brand new tales, this series will introduce a whole new generation of readers to Barry, Bunky, Nancy and the rest of the gang. In this one, Barry has had enough of being a loser and wants to prove that he's a total winner, but when his parents ban him from gaming, he has to think outside the box. Big thanks Farshaw for sending me a finished copy. Be Wild Little One by Olivia Hope and Daniel Igneus, out on the 12th of May, is a stunning picture book that celebrates the wildness in all of us and the beauty of the world all around us. Through its lyrical text and immersive illustrations that fill each and every page, go on a journey through the wonders of nature, from pine forests to awe-inspiring mountains and from sparkling seas to starry skies. Fly across oceans, run with wolves through the mountain snow, dance with fireflies and prepare to be wild. Big thanks Bloomsbury for the finished copy. Future Hero Race to Fire Mountain by Remy Blackwood, out on the 12th of May, is the first book in a new series about a boy who's never quite known where he belongs, but who discovers that the fantasy world he is obsessed with doodling is actually real, when he finds a portal to a legendary world in his local barbershop. Transported to a magical world that's unlike anything he's seen before, it's not just the powerful gods and dangerous creatures that make the world different, it's that everyone believes jor is the hero they've been waiting for. Can he help the land of his ancestors, Ulfrika, which is in trouble? Thanks Scholastic for the finished copy. Also out on the 12th of May is The Good Turn by Shana Jackson, author of Waterstone's book prize winning High Rise Mystery. In this one we meet Josie, an ultra ambitious, future focused, internet loving 11 year old who is desperate to explore the world wider than the edges of her estate or the confines of her computer. So when she learns about Josephine Holloway, a woman who started the first Girl Scout troop for black girls in America, and who she shares her first name with, she's certain she must start her own. After enlisting her friends, they begin their quest for badges. But when they're drawn to an abandoned factory, they stumble across something strange in the shape of someone living there. But who are they? And can Josie and her friends do the right thing and earn their bravery badge too at the same time? Thanks Puffin for the finished copy. Our Sister Again by Sophie Cameron out on the 12th of May is about Isla and her family who are grieving the loss of her older sister, Flora, who died three years ago. Set on a small island off the Scottish coast, the family live in a town where everyone knows each other. So it's a surprise when they're offered the chance to be part of a top secret trial, which revives loved ones as fully lifelike robots using artificial intelligence and their digital footprints. When their sister comes back as a returnee, she looks the same, sounds the same, and pretty much is the same as Flora was, and that's how good she is. But not everyone on their island feels the same. And as threats to Flora worsen, she becomes more secretive in her software and hardware. Can Isla protect the new Flora, or will she lose her sister again? Thanks Little Tiger for the finished copy. In Seed by Carol Lewis and George Ermos out on the 12th of May, we meet Marty, who lives with his mum, who's a bit of a household hoarder, and has managed to fill up their house with everything she can get her hands on. As the council threatens her and him with eviction, Marty does his best to look after her and wonders if anything will ever change. With life at home being tough, 
Marty finds some sanctuary down at the community allotment gardens with his granddad. But on Marty's birthday, he's given a gift from his granddad of a single but very special seed. And as it grows bigger and bigger, it sends Marty, granddad and Marty's best friend Gracie on an adventure they could never have imagined having. Thanks Macmillan for the finished coffee. The Wondrous Prune by Ellie Clements out on the 12th of May is about a girl who discovers she has an incredible magical superpower when her drawings start coming to life. 11 year old Prune is trying to settle into a new town after recently moving there with her mum and troublesome older brother. But if moving into a new town is tough, then being bullied there is even tougher and Prune feels like she can't burden her mum with the fact that this is happening too. But when her brother finds himself in danger, Prune realises that she can't hide her power forever, especially as it might just be the one thing that brings her family back together. Big thanks Bloomsbury for the gorgeous finished copy. Meet explorers, inventors and mighty sky whales in Zayna Starborn and the Sky Whale by Hannah Durkin out on the 12th of May. Zayna spends her days dreaming of adventure in the sky and escaping the smog-filled city of Ravenport. So when she wins the chance to visit the Willoughby Whale Hotel that's built on the back of a flying whale, she grabs it. But a series of clues make her question what she's been told about this dazzling world and she must put aside her differences with her enemies to uncover the secret plot around them as they embark on a journey of a lifetime. Thanks Hachette for the finished coffee. Imagine a world where your only friends are virtual and big tech companies control access to food, healthcare and leisure. And this is Jess's world in Fake by Ellie Fountain out on the 19th of May. But when she turns 14, Jess can go to school with other children for the first time. Most of them hate the real world, but Jess begins to question whether the digital world is perfect after all. Back home, her sister Chloe's life-saving medication is getting ever more expensive. Determined to help, Jess risks everything by using skills forbidden in the cyber world, only to stumble on something explosive. Something that will turn her whole world upside down. It's up to Jess to figure out exactly what is real and what is fake, because Chloe's survival depends on it. Big thanks Pushkin Press for the proof copy. The Breakfast Club Adventures, The Beast Beyond the Fence, out on the 26th of May, is the first children's book by Manchester United and England international footballer and child food poverty campaigner Marcus Rashford. Written with Alex Falase Koya and illustrated by Marta Kissy, it's inspired by Marcus's own experiences growing up. When 12-year-old Marcus kicks his favourite football over the school fence, he knows he's never getting it back. Nothing that goes over that wall ever comes back. But when Marcus gets a mysterious note inviting him to join the Breakfast Club investigators, he is soon pulled into an exciting adventure with his new mates Stacy, Lisa and Azim to solve the mystery and get his football back. And promising to be packed full of friendship, adventure, community and fun, I can't wait to read it. Another one for the 26th of May is Daddy Do My Hair, Beth's Twist by Tola Okwogu and Chante Timothy which is a warm, rhyming picture book celebration of Afro hair and father-daughter relationships. It's the evening before school picture day and Beth would like a brand new hairdo and there's only one man for the job, her dad. Join Beth and Daddy on a wonderful hair venture full of curls, cuddles and quality time with hair care tips from the author who's a professional Afro hair care educator. Thanks Simon & Schuster for sending me a finished copy. The Extraordinary Adventures of Alice Tonks by Emily Kenny, out on the 26th of May, is a boarding school story with an autistic protagonist written by an autistic author. When Alice goes to boarding school, she's eager to make friends, but she's always found it hard. That is, until she discovers she has a gift. She can talk to animals. After a rather strange encounter with a seagull on her first day, she's left with a lot of questions. Why does the bird need her help? And why can she talk to seagulls? Alice is used to being by herself, but she can't solve the mystery alone. With new friends behind her, can Alice harness her magic powers and become the hero she never imagined? Thanks Rock the Boat for the proof copy. Also out on the 26th of May is Anjali Kurao's first non-fiction title, Hope on the Horizon, illustrated by Pippa Koenig and Isabel Lundy. In this one, Anjali shares her top 10 ways for creating change. With the help of her favourite fictional characters and some of the most inspiring people she has ever met, 
Anjali invites readers to dive in and discover everything there is to know about kindness, empathy, friendship and fighting for the things that matter, whilst also discussing issues related to discrimination, injustice and prejudice. Huge thanks Hachette for the very shiny Finnish coffee. Out on the 26th of May, from Peter Bunzel, the best-selling author of The Cogheart Adventures, comes Magic Born, the first instalment of an enthralling new fantasy series set in an alternate 18th century England. The year is 1726, and the Royal Sorcerer of England is on the hunt for those who are Magic Born. When Tempest is captured after accidentally unleashing a power she didn't know she had, she is taken to Kensington Palace alongside a boy like her, Thomas. Trapped, Tempest and Thomas find their magic flicker into life, and with it, long buried memories. For they are the lost prince and princess of Fairyland, bound by a deadly curse, and now the fairies are coming to get them. A battle is building, one only they can end. But who will survive? Thanks Osborn for sending me a proof copy. The Magic Faraway Tree, a new adventure by Jacqueline Wilson and Mark Beach, out on the 26th of May, will transport readers back to the irresistible and much-loved world of Enid Brighton's Enchanted Wood. Milo, Mia and Birdie are on a countryside holiday when they wander into an enchanted wood. Among the whispering leaves there is a beautiful tree that stands high above the rest, the magic faraway tree. And they're soon won over by the magic of the faraway tree and the extraordinary places they discover above it, including the land of unicorns. But not every land is so much fun. Danger looms in the land of dragons. Will the children be saved before it's too late? Thanks Hachette for the hardback finished copy. Lastly, to end the month is Proper Happy by Anton Deck and illustrated by Katie Aby out on the 26th of May. This fun-filled guide to feeling good is Anton Deck's debut children's book that's been created in consultation with child psychology experts and in association with Past the Positivity, their nationwide positivity project with all proceeds going to support the NSPCC. It includes advice and activities to help children nurture their emotional well-being every day, and is packed with so many games, jokes, challenges and quizzes to make them smile. Big thanks Farshaw for the finished copy. So these are the books I'm most excited about reading this month. Let me know in the comments below which children's books you're looking forward to reading, particularly from those featured in this video, or any others you've got your eye on. As always, keep reading! And I'll see you in the next video.